I realize that a lot of people that watch these videos are high school students or students who are about to start their first year as physics students and want to get a feel for what it's like. And it can probably be a little intimidating watching someone in their final year talk about what they're doing. So I'm going to change things up a little bit today and talk about what you can expect your first year as a physics student. Now this isn't going to be a section by section, this is what you're going to learn in each class. Rather, a broad overview of the material you'll be introduced to. Your first year as a physics student, you're only going to take two physics classes, Physics 1 and Physics 2. I should say that by the time you're in Physics 1, you should try to at least be in Calc 2. But I'll explain that more in a little bit. Physics 1 is all about Newton's laws. You're going to talk about exciting things like motion in a plane, projectile motion, orbital motion, friction, conservation of momentum, things like that. Things that probably aren't the reason you want to study physics. Now when I was a first year physics student, I had this idea in my head that I knew that Newton's laws were technically not 100% right and something to do with general relativity being better and in my mind I always wondered if Newton's laws aren't the end of the story, if Newton's laws have their limitations, why do we still learn them? Put simply, it's because you're not ready for this. And also, sometimes that just isn't necessary. Sometimes Newton's laws, and oftentimes Newton's laws, are something you can get away with. They're a really good approximation. Now you are expected to know a little bit of calculus, that way you can appreciate relationships between acceleration, velocity, force, momentum, all that good stuff. But Physics 1 is not a class in calculus. It's not going to go as in-depth as your actual course in calculus. Going into Physics 2, Physics 2 is all about electricity and magnetism. Now you start off describing charged things that aren't moving relative to each other, and you build up the physics and ways to describe those. This is called electrostatics. You introduce things like Coulomb's and Gauss's law, and this is leading into why I said you should have Calc 2 knocked out by the time you take uh, Physics 1. Physics 2 is a bit more mathematically demanding. You're introduced to concepts like surface and line integrals, things that you won't really understand if you aren't or haven't taken Calc 3. Calc 3 is multivariable and vector calculus, and it is just essential if you really want to understand what you're doing in Physics 2. Now, towards the end of Physics 2, you start talking about uh, magnetostatics, and then you start to talk about electromagnetism as a whole. The equations that govern electricity and magnetism classically are Maxwell's equations. These equations can be written two different ways that are here. I'm not going to talk about the meaning of these two different ways, but this is something that might be introduced at the very end of Physics 2. Now the thing that makes this good timing is that at the very end of Calc 3, you get the tools that help you understand why those two different uh, representations of Maxwell's equations work and how to convert between the two. Also, I have a video on how to do it. This whole relationship between Calc 3 and electricity and magnetism becomes much more intimate in your third year once you retake a more in-depth version of electricity and magnetism. So don't feel bad if, you, if there are still some loose ends or some uncomfortable sections that you have in this class. It'll all start to come together in big boy E&M. Physics 2 is also where you start to learn about how to analyze circuits and how to calculate things like resistance and capacitance. And this is typically in the beginning of the semester. Now in preparation for the next semester, your second year of physics, which I'm going to get into in a second video, I'm going to say that when you're in Physics 2, you should also try to be taking a course in differential equations. I said that you'll be taking a deeper course in electricity and magnetism in your third year. Similarly, you'll be taking a more in-depth version of Newton's laws, basically, in, uh, in your second to third year. Now, if you were to say that the most essential math for electricity and magnetism is Calc 3, or multivariable calculus, I would also say that the most essential math for classical mechanics, which is what Newton's laws are, is differential equations. So taking this at the same time as Physics 2 just puts you in a really good situation for the next semesters. The last thing to talk about is the homework for Physics 1 and 2. Now there's normally a lot of people in these classes, and more than likely you might be the only physics major. It's going to be a lot of engineering students. So it's just not practical for professors to come up with a unique homework every week and then also grade it at the end with when you have like 60 or 70 students in the class. And this just means that you'll probably be using Mastering Physics, which is an online homework, I guess, distribution. 
The problem with this is that that means that the homework is never going to be in your professor's words, which means that it's probably not going to be all that representative of the exams either. Mastering physics normally gives you a huge amount of problems and always made me feel like I was being tested on something that I'm just learning. So while I did do the homework, what really helped me do well on the exams was Shams Outlines. Shams is this Shams Outlines book has 3,000 solved problems for physics, and it's all at the University 1 and 2 level. But I hope you guys found this helpful. If you guys want to see a year 2 version of this video, let me know in the comments section, and I'll see you guys there.